There's one thing that makes me really mad. It makes me want to scream. It makes my blood boil. It's student loans, especially... What makes you mad, Shane? Student loans for a worthless degree. And you know who else hates student loans? Student loans! Boo! Elon Musk. Elon Musk, yay! Now, Elon's made some pretty strong statements about universities and college degrees in the past. I think colleges are basically for fun and to prove you can do your chores, but they're not for learning. And there's a bunch of clickbait videos with him that suggest that college is just a waste of time. And then recently, Elon revealed that he was over $100,000 in debt after he graduated from college. So this brings up a huge question when it comes to being financially successful that we want to bring up right now. And that is, is college worth it? And of course, as all of my viewers know, on this channel? The answer is that it depends. Now, I disagree with some of the things that Elon says here, and we all know what happens when you disagree with anything that Big Daddy Elon says. His fanboys come out, absolutely trash your video, dislike your video into the Stone Age for even questioning Elon. Now, when it comes to huge questions like this, there's obviously a lot of nuance, and you really have to dive into the details of the situation in order to get a good answer. And making broad, sweeping generalizations like this is generally not a good idea. And so, in today's video, we're going to break down exactly what Elon's situation was like and what you can take away from this in order to be more successful in your life. And as always, I'm not even going to come up with a joke in this one. Make sure to smash the like button because it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm and it helps the channel. I truly appreciate it whenever you do that. So first of all, I'd just like to say uh, full disclosure, I'm a really big fan of Elon Musk. I think for the most part, he gives really good advice and he's a straight shooter. A lot of business advice people out there kind of just tell you what you want to hear and they sugar code everything because they want you to buy their $997 course and it's almost like they're acting like a politician and they're trying to pander to you. Elon on the other hand usually just gives his honest opinion and a lot of the time his quotes get taken out of context and he gets a lot of hate for that. Now he's obviously not a perfect human being but I do say that he's probably a hundred times smarter than me and I think he deserves a lot of credit. I mean Tesla was amazing, his Neuralink thing is just incredible and then let's not forget the most important thing of all is that he does good at rockets. So let's go ahead and break down his timeline of his college days to see where he's coming from with this opinion. First, when Elon was a teenager, he attended the University of Pretoria for about five months. Now, Pretoria is in South Africa, and he was basically attending the university while he was waiting to immigrate to Canada. He was immigrating to Canada because he was trying to avoid mandatory military service in South Africa, and after he got there somewhere around 1989 or so, he started attending Queen's University. After that, he left around 1992 to study physics and business at the University of Pennsylvania. Now, if you didn't know, UPenn has the Wharton School of Business, which is probably the number one business school in the entire world. And if you look at these two degrees, they're very respectable degrees on their own, but the combination of both of them is really good. So for instance, physics graduates tend to do very well financially, and the stats for business majors are also pretty good overall, although some are better than others. And with just a business degree alone, you could argue that sometimes it's a little bit too general, but when you combine a business degree with something else that goes really well with it, that can be a very good combination. An example of this would be a business and economics degree, which starts off around $55,000 a year and goes all the way up to $110,600 a year. So I think it's clear here that Elon did not go to school for some useless degree that wasn't going to help him that much in life at all. Now he did end up graduating with a bachelor's in physics and economics, and both of those rank really well when you look at the stats. After graduating, he was able to secure two internships in the Silicon Valley area around 19 and his timing could not have been any better. He was able to work at some of the most promising small companies in Silicon Valley and learn about technology and business. In 1995, Elon started a PhD program at Stanford and then he ended up dropping out about one or two days in. Instead of finishing his PhD program, he decided to start his first company, which is Zip2. So let's go back and look at the facts here really quickly. First of all, you could argue that Elon could have learned all of the physics, the math, and all of that sort of thing on his own without ever having to go to college. For a normal person, that might not be possible, but for someone as smart as Elon Musk, he probably could have just done it on his own. In college, a lot of the time, professors just read off of the slides anyways, and they don't even help you out that much, and so you just end up teaching yourself out of the book at the end of the day anyways. For me personally, there were a lot of classes that were like that, and at the time, I thought it was really dumb. But looking back, and this is kind of weird to say, but I sort of learned how to learn, and that has helped me out a lot in other areas of my life. And I think Elon probably is underestimating 
estimating how much that helped him as well. Also, Elon is a super genius and a lot of people might need help learning complicated subjects like this, whereas he might not need help. Next, being at the best business university in the entire world is probably the reason that he knew that there was so much opportunity in Silicon Valley. Now, looking back on this in retrospect, it's very easy to see. Everyone would just be like, duh, of course that's where all the opportunity was. But at the time, not that many people actually knew for sure. So being around other really smart, ambitious people at the best business school in the world probably led him to seek out internships in Silicon Valley. Back in 95, there weren't very many people on the internet. Um, and certainly nobody was making any money at all. Uh, most people thought the internet was going to be a fad. Also, his background in business combined with physics likely helped him get that internship. And at that internship, he got to learn from some of the smartest people in the world, all things related to technology and business. Now, I really think that business is not one of those things that you can learn from a book. It's kind of like riding a bike where the only way you can learn how to be an entrepreneur is to just go out there and be an entrepreneur. You know, you could read a bunch of books on how to ride a bike. You could hire Lance Armstrong to to, you know write a speech to you on how to ride a bike but at the end of the day you're not going to be able to ride a bike until you actually hop on and try to ride it business in my opinion is the same exact way the only way you're going to learn how to get good at it is just by doing it but in this particular situation i think that elon probably wouldn't have even been aware of the opportunity if it wasn't for the fact that he went to business school and second of all he might not have been able to get two valuable internships at some of the best companies in silicon valley if it wasn't for his background now after this he was able to raise a ton of money and he became a multi-millionaire before the year 2000. One of the things that Elon is truly a master at, and I think it was one of the very first things that he got really good at, is raising capital. He's truly one of the best in the world at doing this and he's done it for pretty much every single company that he started or he's been involved with. But when he was originally raising money early on in Silicon Valley, nobody knew who he was and certainly nobody knew who he was going to become. Raising $50 million is a matter of making a series of phone calls, and the money is there. Do you really think all of these big time investors in Silicon Valley would have been willing to give him money if he didn't have a degree at all? So let's say he did have a degree, but it was in something like gender studies. I still highly doubt he would have been able to raise that initial amount of money so that he could learn how to ride a bike, AKA learn how to be a really good entrepreneur. Now, of course I can't prove this, but there is no doubt in my mind that he leveraged his degree from the best business school in the entire world in order to help him raise money. And not just raising money, it also probably helped him network a lot and it opened up a lot of other doors. I also wouldn't be surprised if he leveraged the fact that he went to Stanford for two days in order to get his foot in the door as well. But what about other billionaires? What did the statistics say about billionaires as a whole? And we've all heard the clickbait headlines about how college dropouts become billionaires all the time. You know, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Michael Dell are a few people that come to mind, but those are just isolated examples. So what did the statistics as a whole say about this? Well, in a recent study about education and occupational achievements showed that college does actually matter quite a bit. Study showed that about 90% of billionaires attended college and 80% of millionaires did as well. And if you look even deeper into the data, people who are leaders or CEOs of companies in the Fortune 500, 94% of them attended college. Now you could argue that there's a lot of bias here. People who attend college also tend to be people who are more ambitious and more likely to you know, achieve these feats. And I do think there's some truth to this point, especially when it comes to billionaires. Billionaires are honestly such a ridiculous outlier that in many cases, there's not that much you can learn from them. There's just too much that goes into it that you can't control. We're talking about where you were born, when you were born, genetics, opportunity, who you know, and sheer luck. I think that Elon is not aware of all the advantages that getting those degrees actually gave him. And I think he's also pretty jaded by the fact that a lot of universities are very just do it yourself and you end up just teaching yourself and he had to go $100,000 into debt in order to get those degrees. But let's be real here, for someone like Elon Musk, he's basically like the Michael Jordan of entrepreneurs. So you could basically think of entrepreneurship as a game and let's say you set that game to hard mode, like veteran difficulty, Elon Musk would still probably end up being very successful. Like you could make this guy start a business where he has to sell used lighters. Like that's the business model. You have to sell people used lighters and he would still end up becoming a millionaire somehow. But for the average person, going to college is generally going to be a good idea as long as a few criteria are met. The first thing is that it has to align with your goals. So don't go for a degree just because it makes like really good money or anything like that. You wanna plan things out and go for a degree that aligns 
aligns with your future goals. Two, it's not a worthless degree that isn't going to help you get a job at all after you graduate. A really good example of this would be getting a photography degree in order to become a photographer. This just is not going to give you any advantages like 99.9% .9 of the time, so it's just not worth it for you to spend that time and spend all that money. It'd be much better for you to just take those four years and take all that money, invest it into camera equipment, and just go out and start shooting pictures. And then number three is that it's a good investment. Try to spend the least that you can on college in most cases so that you can get the most out of it. Make sure it's an investment that will pay off in the long run. That way you're not like 30 years down the line and you're still paying your student loans. So what can we learn from this? Somebody who's like Elon Musk, who's a super genius and he's basically like the Michael Jordan of entrepreneurs. When he gives advice, he's likely talking to somebody who he sees kind of like as his younger self. So if you are a fellow super genius who plans on being a billionaire in the future, maybe you should follow Elon Musk's advice. I personally don't plan on being a billionaire. I could never see myself even trying to make that much money. I just want to make enough money so that I can retire really comfortably. And then after that, I don't want to ever have to think about money again. So if you're someone who's extremely ambitious and you want to be a multi-billionaire like Elon Musk, maybe you should listen to his advice. College is generally going to be a good choice for most people as long as you get a good degree. Now there's a lot of things that you can do to make sure that it's a good investment. I go over this in a lot of my other videos. And I always say this, I'm not saying that you should only consider the money when it comes to choosing your college degree. All I'm saying is that is one of the most important things that you should keep in mind. You should never go for something just because it's good money. You should always make sure that it's something that you would actually enjoy doing. Check out my videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and then comment down below any thoughts, comments, ideas, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.